Arc Browser, from a little startup company simply called The Browser Company, has been available for quite a while on Mac OS and iOS. Recently, they moved Arc out of beta for Windows, and now it's officially available for anyone to use on Windows 11. They say support for Windows 10 is coming soon. Arc is not trying to be like Chrome or the other browsers. The experience is completely different than the browsers most of us are currently using. The goal of this browser is to offer a cleaner and calmer user interface that empowers users to use it as more of a tool rather than just an environment to view web pages. And as I'll be showing you coming up, Arc offers features that can help to keep you better organized. When compared to the most popular browsers, the privacy policy is really good. They don't know which websites you visit, what you type in your browser, and they don't sell your data to third parties. For this review, I'll be showing this to you with a fresh install of Arc on this computer. When you're going through the setup process, you will need to create an account. If you already have an account, you can just sign in. After creating an account or signing in, you'll have the option to import your passwords, bookmarks, most important tabs, and history from another browser you're using. You'll also have the choice whether to make Arc your default browser. If it's your first time using it, I would recommend saying no until you get familiar with it. If you decide you like it, you can always make it your default browser later on. Arc is built on Chromium, so just like other Chromium-based browsers, web pages should load properly, and you'll be able to use your favorite Chrome extensions with it as well. When you first launch Arc, you'll notice it has a clean-looking user interface. Clicking on the box here at the top will open a pop-up window to do a search or enter a URL of a website. You can also quickly access the most recently opened tabs. One thing that takes getting used to is instead of the tabs being at the top, they're located in the left sidebar. This threw me off a little bit when first using it, but I think I actually prefer it this way now. You can easily pin favorites at the top. Selecting new tab will open the same window to do a search or enter a web address. If you quickly want to see a history of the tabs that you've had open, here in the lower left corner, click on the archive icon. Clicking on the plus to the right of that will let you create a new space or folder, and you can also open a new tab. I'll explain those more later on. One of my favorite features is spaces, which lets you pin a set of tabs into a group. This comes in handy when working on a project or to quickly access a group of tabs that you commonly open for a certain task. To create a space at the bottom of the sidebar, click the plus and select new space. Give your space a name. I'll call this one PC Build Sites. You can choose a profile. I'll just leave it on the default. And you can choose a theme, which essentially means that you can give it a color. I'll leave it as it is. And here at the bottom, click on Create Space. And you'll see it here at the top. Down here at the bottom, you'll see two dots. So you'll see doing that, it basically opened a new page for the sidebar. Let's go back to the first one. To add a tab to a space, right click on it, go down to move to and select the space. For this, I'll select pinned. Now do this for the additional tabs that you want in that space. Go down here, select the second dot, and there they are. After you've created a space, right clicking on it will let you share it with others, rename it, you can change the theme, move it to another profile, and you can delete it. Split view is useful for those times you want two tabs viewable inside the browser at the same time. First, right click on any tab you have opened or a site you have within your folders or spaces and select add split view. Then select the other site. Right now I have two spaces. There's the default space that you see when you first start using Arc and they just call it space one. At the bottom of the side panel, you can access other spaces indicated by the dots in between the archive and plus icons. So let's go to the other space right now. In any space you've created, you can add favorites here at the top. Google Mail and Google Calendar are the defaults when you first launch Arc. I'll add one of my favorite sites by creating a new tab and going to the website. To add to the favorites, just simply drag that tab up to the favorites and let go. To get rid of a favorite, right click on it and select remove favorite. And now it's gone. With any website you have pinned to your spaces or favorites, you can take advantage of their peak feature, which lets you quickly preview links 
without leaving your current pinned tab. In this example, I have msn.com pinned to space one. And with this article I have opened, I'll click on a link to preview it. To the upper right of the peak window, you can close it out, expand it, or put it in split view. Those are just a few of the features I wanted to share with you. As I mentioned earlier, the Arc browser lets you add Chrome extensions to enhance its functionality. To add them, click the Arc icon in the upper left, go to Extensions, and then click Add Extension. This will take you to the Chrome Web Store where you can find and add any extension you want to the Arc browser. In conclusion, I highly recommend for people to try out the Arc browser. Give it a week or two to get used to it. In truth, it won't be for everyone, while the Windows version, at the time of this recording, is missing a few features that are available in the macOS version, I do find it to be a refreshing take on what a web browser could be. Thanks for watching. If this video was useful for you, give it a thumbs up and share it with others. What do you like or don't like about the Arc browser? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. And if you haven't done so already, subscribe and click the bell to get notified of our latest reviews of software and other tech-related stuff.